I hope you're having an incredible, a very merry Christmas. I remember when I was about six or seven years old, I spent a Christmas, or my family spent Christmas Eve with my grandmother, Grandma Maynards. Now, she was the grandma that could make the absolutely magical pancakes, but that's another story. On this Christmas Eve, though, and of course, this was a long time ago, so it didn't take much to get excited about smaller gifts back then. But my grandmother gave all my aunts and my mom some undergarments for Christmas. And the festivities that followed, well, let me just say that I'm forever marked by those moments. That's when I determined as a young child of six or seven that all adults were crazy. And now looking back on that moment from my 46 years, uh, I realize that they are. So anyway, gift giving is a wonderful show of love and appreciation. Sometimes you can say things through a gift that are hard to articulate in other ways. And the, give, the idea of giving gifts for Christmas is founded, obviously, in the Christmas story. And it's founded not only in the wise men who gave gifts to Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus, but also in the truth that God gave the greatest gift of all when he gave us his son, Jesus Christ. Because when he gave us Jesus, God wasn't just giving us a gift that would, you know, be forgotten in a few months or re-gifted later. When God gave us Jesus, he gave us the answer for our lives, for our purpose, for who we are, and for why we're here. It's really important for us to wrap our heads around that simple reality that Jesus is the answer. Because even in the Christmas story, we see things that are not the answer. For example, the wise men went to King Herod. Now, governments are not the answer. Now, that's not to say that governments can't be helpful and can't be good, because they certainly can. In fact, if you live in the United States, then you probably are living in a very blessed life. If you own a car, you are wealthier than 90 to 95% of the, the world. And so government can be a good thing. And in this case, if you look at the text, Matthew 2, 4, this is what Herod did. He said he called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and ask, where's the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said. So you see, Herod was able to get the answer the wise men needed. So he helped them and told them where they needed to go. So even though his motives weren't the best, or they were evil, the truth is he was still helpful. But we need to understand that government will never really be the answer we're looking for. No matter how much you fix it, no matter what style it is, it's still never going to be the answer. But not only are governments not the answer, wise men aren't the answer either. We live in a world that's always looking for someone to put on a pedestal, someone who has the answers. And so there are so many books and so many speakers out there for us to try and find someone who can tell us and give us, basically, the answer we need for our lives. But the truth is, is that true wise men know they are not the answer. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. I think the wise men that came from the east, probably from the area of Babylon where Daniel lived, where Israel was in captivity for 70 years, which would explain how they knew about the star and the Messiah was from the writings of Daniel and the scriptures that would have been left in Babylon after Israel returned. But I wonder that when they came to Jerusalem, they were maybe a little surprised that they were the only ones who knew <laughs> because they're coming to the land that's supposed to be the land of the Messiah. It's Israel's king that is supposed to be born and they get there and the religious experts, the scriptural experts, had no idea that the Messiah was going to be born. And it would seem that they didn't really care. They didn't do anything about it. I remember a long time ago, um, a church sign. I can't remember where it was. But at Christmas time, they had this phrase up, and I've seen it many times since, that says, wise men still seek him. You see, true wise men know they themselves are not the answer. They know they need an answer. And so that lends into our question for today. You know, we know government's not the answer. 
And we know wise men aren't the answer. But if you want to be wise, then you must understand, and I must understand, that we actually need an answer. Now that answer is what Christmas is all about. That answer is the gift that God has given to each and every one of us. The answer is Jesus Christ. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. John 3, 16. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Very seldom in our lives do we take a few moments, or any moments, to really let the questions that are on our hearts surface. Questions like, am I alone? Am I worthy? Do I have a purpose? Or why am I here? You see, when Adam and Eve were created in the Garden of Eden, they lived in perfect unity, perfect communion with God. But that was ruined. That was corrupted. And the end of the day, Adam and Eve ended up walking away from God because of the choices they made. The basic choice, which was to do their thing versus to do what God desired. But even on that horrific day, when Adam and Eve walked out of the Garden of Eden, God still had a promise, and that promise was this in Genesis 3. I will cause hostility between you, God speaking to Satan, and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring, and he will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Now that probably doesn't sound like much of a promise at first, but it is. It is the promise of Christmas. It's the promise that God was going to send a, a man, a deliverer, born of a virgin, and that deliverer would be the champion that would restore everything that we lost in the Garden of Eden through Adam and Eve's choice, and not only restore it, but give us more than they ever had. Because of Jesus, we are no longer slaves. We are no longer failures. Because of his generous gift toward us, we are not condemned, we are not bankrupt, and we are not alone. That is God's answer. And I pray that you will accept Jesus as your answer. And stop trying to find hundreds of answers, thousands of answers that don't exist. The greatest gift of all is Jesus. The answer of God for all all the things that worry us and weigh us down. I pray you receive the greatest gift of all. Merry Christmas.